All right. Our next joist is going to go right here, and it's going to uh, head out, and then we'll do our last joist, which will be our rim joist. Um, I'm measuring from the end of our joist back to here, and I get a measurement of uh, 131 and 13 sixteenths. And so I'll go cut one joist for this. I'm going to put this on here temporarily. We'll just, we'll just tack it on here, and we'll move to the rim joist. But we'll have to come back and put a hanger on this as well, and it'll be a single hanger. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just put some toenails on here so when I hold my board up, I don't have to try to put nails in also. So I put it on my line. That, that should hold it until we put our hanger on here. We'll go down here and we'll cut a block for our joist because since we doubled this up, it's going to be a special block in between this joist we just put in and the doubler. Also, we're going to have a special block between the one we just put in and the rim joist. So, because that shortens up because that's where we started layout. We talked about that earlier. So, a measure for those blocks, cut them and and then we'll put it on our rim joist. Notice that over here I've, I've gone over the edge of my mud sill. What we've done though is we followed this mud sill, and this mud sill is out just a little bit more than this one. So this block is actually following the this this mud sill just like the rest of these blocks. And this is the end of a piece of wood, and it it's just a little bit narrower at this end. Right? The glue when we lay down the subfloor will probably take care of that. So we're not too worried about it. All right, we're almost finished. This is our last joist. We're going to be done with these, these floor joists and we can move on to our next step. But before we do that, we have to finish up this last joist. So we're going to nail it down here like we did before. We're going to nail it off to our, our doublers here that we just put in. It's going to give us our crawl hole down to our crawl space. And we're going to march down here and we're going to nail it to our block down there. We're also going to nail along the edge, toenail it down, down to the mud sill and tie this rim joist down to the mud sill. We'll, um, we'll, we'll jump to our final, final step, which will be that last joist at the end of those cantilever joists and we'll be done with this. But that's a, that's a quick and easy one, and we'll uh, knock that out real quick. at the last last part of our joisting. This is our rim joist out on the cantilever. It's kind of unwieldy to do this by yourself. You can put a block on the bottom of a joist to hold it in place to be that other person. But it really, really, really is a two-man job because that person at the end of the board, not the person nailing, but the person at the end of the board is, is kind of driving the boat, as it were. They're lifting up or pushing down this this. Uh, joist, this rim joist, 
so the person nailing can match the top of this rim joist to each separate joist top, okay? You'll see more how it works as we go and do this, but say if you have a very crowned board and you're trying to put it on a nice straight area, you're going to nail, lift, nail the next one, lift more, nail a little bit, keep lifting, lifting. You're going to try to straighten that, that board out on your joists. It can be done. It's a little bit of a, a, a hassle. So it's, it's always better to have a more straight board when you're doing your rim joist. Sometimes the sun plays tricks on them and they, they bend them. I think this one's fairly straight, but again, this is really a two-person job. You can do it by yourself, but we're going to do it with two people. I'm going to start a few nails, probably just one in each, but if I hold this board flush with my rim here and start, I can see just where my, my joists are going to be. That way I'm not fighting for nails when I flip the board over. But I think we're ready to go now. Don't fight me. Quit fighting me, man. Up. Lots. More. Okay, down, 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 good. Up a bit. darn straight to me. This board gave us a little bit of a fight, but um, with two people, you can usually get it going. Um, obviously, pushing down is a lot easier than pulling up, and uh, you'll find that to be true, but with a little bit of, uh, little bit of um, muscle, you can usually get it, get it in the place you like and get it nice and straight. So the last thing we'll do here is we'll make a mark across here. We'll square down and we'll just trim this piece off. Again, this extra piece, even if it's a little bit longer, it's kind of nice because that gives you a little bit more leverage when you're lifting up and down. The longer the tail piece is, the easier it is because when you come to the last joist, if it's difficult to get to, if it needs a lot of, bit of, a lot of movement, and you have a short piece here, you're going to say, doggone it, I wish I had gotten a longer board. All right, next step from here is insulation, and then we'll put down the subfloor, and then we'll finally get the frame, and that's what everybody likes. Home Improvement Camp. Have at it. 